Hi guys and welcome back. This is my Kermis at MH Tutorials and today I want to show you guys how you can create realistic looking leather. Uh, excuse my voice, I'm, uh, I got a little bit of a cold but uh, hopefully you can understand me okay. Alright, let's get started. So we're going to start off by going to our polygons menu and we're going to create a plane. I'm just going to drag that out in the grid. And in our attribute editor, I'm going to increase the subdivisions to 40 by 40. All right. I'm going to select the plane that we created, right click on it, go to assign new material. We'll just go with a symbol blend. All right. Now, in our attribute editor, uh, go to your blend one tab, and we're going to hit the, uh, the color checker box here. And instead of a color, we're going to go uh, to the material leather. Now, if it doesn't show up here, just look it up in the search bar. We're going to select that. Okay, and now here you'll see in the sample that the cell structure is fairly large. So we're going to pull that down a little bit. And it's a personal preference, but I don't know, something like 0 0.25 in that region, right? Okay, got that. And now we're going to click on our object. We're going to hit 5 for shaded mode. And I'm going to hit the uh, textured node here. All right, so we got that. Now we're going to go back to our blend tab and we're going to go down to our bump mapping section. We're going to select that. Again, select the leather, like so. And now we're going to position our leather for the render. Okay, hit W, pull that up. Hit E and rotate that a bit, like something like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this uh, plane into an enclave material. So while it's selected, go to your dynamics menu. Uh, sorry, end dynamics menu. Go to Enmesh and create the cloth. Then we're going to zoom in our object. We're going to right click on it, go to Vertex, and we're going to select the two top corners, that one, and shift select that one. And then we're going to go to End Constraint in our End Dynamics menu. Then we're going to select Transform. And in addition, we're going to select our plane. Go to fields and we're going to add gravity. All right, I'm just going to turn my grid off here. Go to display and unselect the grid. Okay, and now I'm going to add some frames for my animation. Let's say 250, 250. That looks good. And I'm going to create some lights. So I'm going to create lights, point light. Just going to drag that out, position that about somewhere like here. Control D, duplicate it, and I'm going to select both of them. All right, and I'm going to go to my point light shape tab, and in the uh, shadow section, I'm going to select to use that map shadows, like so. Okay, now I'm going to play my animation. All right, and I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, now let's zoom in on that a little bit. And let's see if we got something that looks like realistic leather. All right, I'm going to go to my render settings. I'm going to select metal ray. In my quality, I'm going to bump that up all the way to max. My common section. I'm going to go with a preset of HD 720.0. Right. Okay, and now let's hit render and see what happens.
it's coming out nicely as you can see and like I mentioned before if you look at the uh, the shell structure and the material you know you can make that larger or smaller you can play with the color settings uh, the intention of this tutorial is to show you you know what you need to take into account when you are uh, creating leather or something that looks realistic so uh, we'll just uh, let this uh, render out for a second but as you can see it came out pretty pretty well so uh, well as always uh, if you've got any questions about this tutorial please leave a comment and uh, likes and subscriptions are obviously appreciated and uh, We'll just uh, wait a couple more seconds until this render is complete. And then uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.